I have a PhD in uh, food science and microbiology, and I've been working in this uh, field of um, food safety and public health my whole career. Uh, I uh, worked in industry for a number of years, working for mainly food companies. I was in Washington, D.C. for 10 years, uh, representing the food industry uh, on uh, a number of food safety related matters. I left Washington in uh, 1994 and went to Kansas State University. I was there for 21 years and taught courses in microbiology and food safety. And then uh, I retired from Kansas State in 2015, at the end of 2015, and almost immediately went to work for Chipotle. And I headed up their food safety programs for uh, three years. On uh, leaving Chipotle, I uh, joined RGF Environmental as an advisor. I was a scientific advisor here uh, for a number of months. And then uh, after March, we became so focused on controlling uh, SARS-CoV-2, I joined the company full-time as the uh, executive director for science and technology. RGF sought to determine whether an effective active air treatment system, uh, and we decided to uh, rely on the Remy Halo with the proprietary PHI technology, would be effective in reducing the risk of transmission of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. This is the virus that causes COVID-19. We actually had uh, some pretty strict requirements going into the testing. One was we wanted to use a test chamber that represented real world conditions, so a large test chamber. Secondly, we wanted to make sure we use the actual SARS-CoV-2 virus, not a surrogate or something that was similar to, but the actual virus. And then third, we wanted to be able to test on surfaces, but also test the virus in aerosolized form. So uh, those were our preconditions uh, that we set before we even started the testing. We identified a lab in California called Innovative Bioanalysis, and uh, they met all of our requirements. They had a large test chamber, uh, 1,280 cubic feet, uh, almost, you know, pretty much room size. They did have access to the actual SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is very unusual. Not, not very many labs in the United States ha have that access. And they were able to um, test on inoculated surfaces and also test on surfaces that were exposed to the aerosolized virus. The results were very good. Uh, on surfaces, uh, we had a greater than three log reduction, which means that more than 99.9% .9 of the virus was inactivated. Uh, in, in the aerosolized form, we had just slightly less, 99.5% reduction. And uh, what we observed is that we started killing the virus on contact immediately. Because the chamber was so large, it took a little bit of time, minutes I'm saying, to reach equilibrium in that chamber. By the time we reached equilibrium, it was hard to find any uh, remaining virus whatsoever. This was the first in a series of tests. RGF has uh, uh, a number of products, uh, that air treatment uh, products, that will be evaluated in the uh, weeks and months ahead. In, in fact, RGF has been testing uh, viruses uh, for a number of years, going all the way back almost 20 years ago, uh, beginning with norovirus, where they uh, conducted a, a successful test. And then as uh, viral hazards become known and of interest, uh, RGF has done additional testing on, on those as well, including the H1N1 virus. The testing on the SARS-CoV-2 began in March, very early on when we first, all of us first knew that this was a, uh, a major uh, hazard. Uh, so uh, we initiated testing then, and it's been ongoing since then. The first uh, RGF uh, technology that was tested was the Remy Halo with PHI. We will be testing other RGF technologies uh, as we move forward into the future.